Hi guys, I'm Autumn Beckman and welcome to Vlogmas Day 24. It is Christmas Eve already. Okay, a couple of things before we get back to the main content of this video where I just was. One, how did I forget Winnie yesterday when I was listing off all the people in the Secret Santa gift exchange? That gaudy group. I was sitting here going through my head, okay, G, I'm the A, and I would have sworn I mentioned W. How did I forget that? And I filmed that part twice, so maybe I mentioned in the first one, I don't know, but the first one I messed up, so I put the second one in. And I didn't even catch it in editing, so Winnie, I'm sorry. A lot of you watching caught that though and commented about it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to Winnie's channel below because if you haven't seen her yet she's wonderful she's hilarious she's so much fun she has a fantastic collection of bags please go check her out if you're not familiar with Winnie Winnie B L V is her channel name second so many of you rightfully were concerned about Baron and I appreciate that some of you were also concerned that I didn't seem concerned about Baron you know why because I wasn't concerned about Baron <laughs> the reason for that is that Baron has eaten, well, there are a few reasons. First of all, Baron has eaten so many things. He came from the streets. I don't know what his story was before this, but he was rescued in the parking lot of a family dollar in some small town in Texas and brought to rescue in Houston, and that's where he ended up with me. So I don't know how long he was on the streets, but the impression that I get is he learned very, very well how to find food and to eat anything he could get his little mouth on. So usually what happens, and we have become very good about keeping food away from him when we're not gonna be around to supervise him, but what happens is when he's alone, he doesn't do this when we're home, he will eat anything he can. It's like he thinks he's been abandoned and he's gonna starve to death, so he's gotta find food immediately. So that's what he did yesterday when he got accidentally locked in my room. He ate that bag of chocolate. Now, here's the other reason I'm not concerned. I have an understanding that for chocolate to be toxic to a dog, like really toxic where it really hurts them, is when it's basically baker's chocolate. It's a high concentration of pure chocolate. What he ate was not that. What he ate was mostly the chocolates from the local advent calendar that are all filled with all kinds of different things. And that stuff could all be bad for him too. I'm sure he's not supposed to have those things. But the amount of actual chocolate that would be bad for him that he ate was not going to be anything that hurt him. Part of the reason I know this, and some of you guys know this, he had an event with chocolate that happened to be a few vlogmases ago. If I can find that video again, I will link it below in case you want to watch. It was pretty interesting. Where he did end up at the emergency vet because while we were gone, he got into a bag of baking chocolate. It wasn't baker's chocolate. It was like bittersweet chocolate or dark chocolate. And it was one of those bags of chocolate chips that I was about to make a recipe with. And he ate three quarters of that bag of chocolate. Now knowing how much chocolate he ate then and what kind of chocolate it, it was, in that instance I was concerned. And what happened is we took him outside and we didn't know if Roxy had had any so this happened to her too. They both got doses of hydrogen peroxide, and I googled online how much to give them for their weight and everything. That makes them vomit, or at least it's supposed to. And by the way, if Roxy had eaten the chocolate in here yesterday, then I would be concerned, because she has a much more sensitive system than Baron has. Baron has an iron stomach, and I knew 100% that he was going to be okay, that's why I wasn't concerned. Roxy, after one dose of hydrogen peroxide, she got everything out of her system. Baron, I gave him three doses, about 15 minutes apart, nothing. Didn't phase him at all. So at that point, I took him to the emergency vet. He was still fine. He had his stomach pumped. After that, he was not fine. <laughs> you should go watch the video just to see how he looked before and after that, poor guy. I think had he not had his stomach pumped, he probably still would have been fine. But, you know, I love the little guy. I'm cautious with him. Wanted to make sure. But the incident yesterday did not warrant that, I promise you. I also used to work at vet clinics, so I do have some knowledge of this. I've also worked at the zoo. I knew he was going to be okay. That's why I wasn't concerned. That's why we didn't go to the vet. But I do appreciate those of you who didn't know that about Baron being concerned. So thank you. Also, I got a package in the mail from Michelle Salter. She is one of my longtime viewers here. And I don't have a P.O. box or a mailing address that I give out. So she had Yota's address and sent it to her to send to me. And I have noticed that this package was shipped from Oregon, where I believe Michelle lives. Oh, it's all wrapped up pretty. 
Oh, look at that. That's so nice. It has a little card, a little tag that says autumn. It has a card on it. It has a nutcracker sticker on the back. Hello. There's the face of the card. Very pretty. And a very nice little note inside. Thank you, Michelle. Pull that ribbon off. Oh my God. Okay, first of all, this is on here. That's a planar clip. It's a magnetic clip. But on the back of this, is this for real? On the sticker, it says Dior. Really? The tissue paper is Dior tissue paper. Is that what's in here? <gasps> it is. Oh my God. Oh, that is beautiful. It appears to be a notebook. Here's the cover. Look at all the detail in there. That's beautiful. And it has metallic gold on it with the blue. Dior has some beautiful designs, really intricate, and it says Dior on the spine. It has gold edging. This is so pretty. Yeah, it's a notebook. Check it out. It's a lined notebook. This is beautiful. It's a hardcover. I, I swear I looked at the notebooks this year and I didn't see this one. It's spectacular. Thank you, Michelle. I certainly wasn't expecting anything like this. I wasn't expecting anything at all, but wow. Thank you. I'm, I'm impressed. I know just what I'm gonna use this for too, but I'm not gonna tell you guys about it just yet. There are things happening around here. Now we're going to get back to the location where I was at the very beginning of this video. I have a very special treat for you today, a very special guest, actually several special guests, and I'll say hi to them now because I know they're watching. They were excited to see this. So I'll take you to meet them and then I'll be back at the end with the advent calendars. Oh, by the way, just so you're sure, here's Roxy, and underneath her being licked to death is Baron. Are you okay, Baron? He's okay. I'm at my mom's house, and I have a few very special guests here. The first one, my sister Emily. You can talk, it's video. <laughs> Hi everyone! <laughs> and would you guys guys like to come over? Yeah. Emily's gonna tell you who these people are. So come on. So this is Ellie and this is Joshua. And some of y'all may remember um, that my husband and I foster and Joshua and Ellie are brothers and sisters that we will be adopting in 2023. So we're super excited to add them to our family. Yay. We are super excited too. And this is the first time we're meeting them today. Yes. We're all together. So yay. Emily, do you want to explain why they're wearing masks and we're not? With children in foster care, they are not allowed to be on social media as recognizable. So therefore they are wearing masks to prevent you from actually seeing their full face. That's it. So what we're gonna do, my sister is a professional baker and that's not what she does these days, but she still knows all the professional things. And I told you guys the other day that my grandfather used to make tea cakes, and th those are cookies, and that was one of our family traditions. My sister has taken over that tradition. She's gonna show us how to decorate the tea cakes professionally and how to get them to look like you bought them in the store and really impress people. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Have fun? All right. So for example, these are the cookies and there is one that she has iced and you see how that icing is just totally flat and smooth i don't know how to do that do you i do she does <laughs> the first thing i want to show y'all is icing consistency and this green icing right here is pretty pretty thin so as you see as i pull it away and kind of pull that spatula through it it's kind of taken um not too too long for it to come back together Typically, you want it to be about 10 seconds, like 7 to 10 seconds, for it to be fully smooth again. So you see the little ridge, and then eventually it'll kind of just smooth out and go away. So this is pretty good consistency icing. I also cover the royal icing, which is what I decorate my cookies with, with a damp towel because this royal icing does harden. And once it hardens and crusts over, then you cannot mix that back in. So you have to kind of remove it. So this white one is a lot thicker. You see how it's not really coming back together. So with this consistency, this is great for doing decorations, piping skills, things like that. The green icing is perfect for flooding your cookies. What do you mean flooding our cookies? Well, let's show you. If you see right here this green cookie, how it's completely covered with the icing. 
This is going to be called flooding. So you're gonna completely smooth over and ice the cookies. I'm gonna take a fresh cookie and I have all my icing bags and colors pre-made. Once again, I have a damp towel over the tips. And you see the green icing is kind of dripping out of this bag because this is my flood icing. I always grip my bags between my thumb and my pointer finger and kind of twist it and you see how it's just kind of dripping on out. So I always start in the middle and then kind of just work my way out, outline the cookie. How long did it take you to get good at doing that? Cause you're doing it pretty quickly and smoothly there. Um, well, Papa and Granny, our grandparents, had us decorating cookies as we were kids, and that's kind of what started my passion for baking. And as far as like profession, like getting it smooth and looking really pretty, years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was just a lot of practice, a lot of cookies. So this tool here is just a cake tool. Really and truly, this is a little needle. And you can use a toothpick if you don't have one of these scribing tools. You can go to the crafting store and just get a needle if you want, the like crochet needle. And here, I didn't go all the way to the edge, but I'm gonna kinda do circular motions hmm. and just kinda bring that icing out and kinda shape that cookie a little bit more better with the icing. Kind of fill it in. I would never have thought to do something like that. And then sometimes, if you don't mix your icing correctly, because a lot of people kind of whip the royal icing together, then you get all these air bubbles. And so with the scribing tool, you can go in and pop your air bubbles. So you made the royal icing. Do you have a recipe that we can leave below for that? I do. It is super, super, super simple. It is two pounds of powdered sugar, so just like basically one bag of powdered sugar, with three tablespoons of what is called meringue powder, which is an egg white substitute. You can find that um, at any of your craft stores, Walmart has it, um, anyone that kind of sells cake decorating supplies in your area should have it. And then water. The amount of water will honestly depend on the humidity that day it will depend on your altitude there's some days where i use even with that two pounds of powdered sugar only about six tablespoons of warm water i like to use warm because if it's cold then the royal icing gets hard so you want to kind of keep it on the warmer side and then there's some days i'm putting a full cup of water in there so it really and truly just depends royal icing is something that you really have to practice and kind of get the hang of. Always add less water and don't go in for like a full half a cup of water kind of situation. You wanna take it nice and slow to incorporate it, mix it fully up. And I use a stand mixer and just use the paddle um, or even the whip depending on what I'm in the mood for. So that sounds like something you'd really need to practice and figure out the best consistency for. Is there something that people can just pick up at the grocery store that would have that consistency? Or they could they get like a little jar of frosting and just add water or milk or something? I know that the stores like Wilton, they sell cookie icing. I have never used it. I know a lot of people who have. I can't speak to it because I've never used it, so I don't know if it hardens. There's plenty of bakeries out there who use buttercream icing to decorate cookies, but that's not going to harden. I like something that's gonna harden. And with the royal icing, you can actually add um, flavoring to it. So like a teaspoon of vanilla or a teaspoon of almond, something like that, just to kind of enhance the flavor some. These are great tips. Thanks, Emily. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so she showed us how to flood cookies, which is very helpful. I didn't know that. I've been around her, I'd seen her doing incredible cakes, like think of the most incredible cake you've ever seen. She knows how to do that. And I've never actually, I guess, paid attention when you do, I mean, I have for a few things, but I've never learned how to do all this. I'm enjoying this, I hope you are too. Now she's gonna show you how to decorate the cookies, how to pipe them and then dip them into the sprinkles. Yep, something super simple. Of course, my super simple may not be so super simple <laughs> to everyone else. Right. But um, this is just a way that at a bakery I used to work at, we decorated our Christmas tree cookies. 
that I thought was really cute and simple. So we flooded the cookie and now it has set up, meaning it's just hardened where if you push on it, it's not going to kind of break. It's crusted over, so to speak. And now I'm gonna take um, kind of a little bit thicker icing and I'm just gonna do just kind of some random swirls. It does not have to be pretty. You just kind of take it back and forth. You have a very, very steady hand there. Yes, it's all about pressure control. And then I'm going to take it over to some sprinkles, turn it upside down, and just kind of wiggle it around. And as you bring it up, ooh, how there pretty! You go. So it's like a strand of lights or garland or something on the tree. It looks like a professional made it. What? <laughs> you're you're supposed to say it did. <laughs> It did! <laughs> and so on our little gingerbread man here, I'm just going to decorate him as if he was gingerbread. So kind of just do like a little swirl. As I'm piping, I'm keeping the same kind of squeeze on the bag and not kind of changing pressure. Because if I change pressure, I'll kind of show you here, is if you squeeze really hard and then kind of let up on your pressure, you see how it changes? I do see that. Yeah. So we just gonna scrape that off. Oh, you can fix your mistakes, huh? Yeah. Pretty cool. That's why I like this little scribing tool. Now one thing I'm noticing about your piping bag and the tip on it is it doesn't look like the ones that they sell at the grocery store. It looks fancier. Well, I do use metal tips. They come in various sizes. This brand here is PME. It's a professional English brand one. They have the smallest size tips that I have ever seen. And like this is what is called a size two tip. So you can kind of see how small that is. And it goes all the way down to a double zero. Wow. So with my cookies, that's what I usually use is um, all these smaller tips. For flooding, I typically use a little bit larger, just a size three, so you can see it's slightly larger. I saw one, where did it go? I think it was on one of the green ones, maybe. This thing, I've never seen that at the grocery store. What's that about? So you can kind of see right here inside the bag. So this is called a coupler and a ring, mm -hmm. and this is for whenever you are going to use the same colored icing, but with multiple different tips. Okay. And so what I am wanting to do is this here is a leaf tip, Mm -hmm. And so whenever I go and pipe holly, I need the uh, green for the leaves. Oh, cool. And of course, I couldn't leave my mom's house today without introducing you again to my favorite sister. Hey! But baby Nora, <laughs> she's, she's much cuter. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. She's my favorite. Hashtag Mine too. Sorry. Nora, you are too big for your own good. Get down, little girl. Get down. 
it's not safe. I, don't, I think mm -hmm. mine is really bad. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Yeah, you got you it. Got You're it. doing great. I'm doing. I feel like someone is chewing on my shoes. I wonder why that is. Maybe because somebody's chewing on my shoes. What are you doing? So this one is Raymond, who's over there with my favorite sisters. That's right. That's cool. Did you get, and what did you do? That looks great. You dipped yours in the sprinkles. Very cool. Those look great, guys. I'll show you some other cookies that have been decorated since we filmed earlier. You'll make sure if you like this video to hit that like button, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you guys for being in the video. It's been very nice to meet you today. And then for a easy rollout cookie recipe and royal icing recipe, I will let Autumn post that for y'all. In the description box below. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Emily, for teaching us how to make, how to decorate beautiful cookies. You're welcome. Any yes. questions, just ask. Since today is day 24, it is the last day for most of these calendars. I believe it's the last day for Tony's. So let's see what we got. See if we did anything. We got anything special here. We got two of them. Yay. They are both milk caramel sea salt. By the way, several of these that Baron got into yesterday were still sealed. So he didn't even eat those. So he ate less than I thought he did. And maybe less than you thought. All these here. Plus there were some in the bag still. Hello. Now this one has 25 days. Oh, it's one of those like Oreo kind of cookies with the white chocolate. I like these. There's the inside. And by the way, a lot of people end Vlogmas on day 24. because a lot of advent calendars end on day 24. But I've got your back. There will be 25 days of Vlogmas. I promise you that. And we're on the last day of the jewelry calendar. And I tell you what, this might be the most disappointing day. Wait till you see this. I didn't even know what this was when I first opened it because remember I opened everything early. This is such a disappointment to me. Any guesses as to what it could be? I thought oh they've done a special dust bag and some very special piece of jewelry that's padded very well so it's well protective. Oh no no don't get any good ideas like that. It's a cheap very wrinkled little reusable shopping bag. Don't we get these free everywhere? It's horrible. Why would they do this to us in a $400 calendar? So they will be hearing from me about the things they chose to put in here and about the quality of the items. Not happy. I think it's the last day for reindeer cookies. However, it's a good thing. Hello, Roxy that Gwenny in my Secret Santa yesterday gave these guys some treats, so they do still have things to look forward to. But yes, there absolutely is advent calendar withdrawal after Vlogmas. Some of you have mentioned that for the dogs. They get three cookies. And what does it say? Wishing you a very Merry Christmas from all of us at Lily's Kitchen. Here you go, Roxy. Here you go, Baron and Roxy. Baron and Roxy and Baron. And that's it. And Vincent has one more box to get. Day 24. Hi, Vincent. It's day 24. This is your last box. You more interested in my fingers? I, okay. You want the box to scratch your head? Yes, you're very silly. Thanks for the whistle. You're a very silly bird. Very silly. I'm gonna put this up here with your other boxes that are partially eaten. Still, really? Head scratches is all you want for Christmas, huh? Yep, lots of head scratches. You got it. Bye, Vincent, I have to go edit.